Shalom la b'chayim shal Peace be to the elect of the nation of Israel. Wa kahalayim la alahayna wa yahu b'shem Yahshai b'shem Kadosh. All praises to our power Yahu b'shem Yahshai b'shem Kadosh, which Yahu is a true, almighty, and powerful name of the heavenly Father, who the world only calls God, and His only begotten Son's name is Yahu Shai, who the world only calls Jesus Christ by Hashem, meaning in the name of Chaim, meaning Spirit Kadosh is holy, which I uttered in the Paleo Hebrew language has returned back onto. The Hebrew Israelites was consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and the Americans. And of course, those who have been scattered across the four winds, whom are like into the speckled bird, which, of course, our people have been scattered, so some of our people may look like the heathen. So you say Shalom to the elect of you, which are the chosen of the chosen nation, which is Yahshua Allah Israel, whom are a lot are predestined for salvation. That of course is the hundred and forty four thousand prophets, Hanabayayim, and of course the rest of the number the multitude, which is the one third, which is men, women and children. To hearken unto the words of the prophets, which the prophets are ambassadors for Yahweh Bashem Shai, speaking the word, giving you the warning, so you can take heed and be delivered if you are to be part of that elect number. To Yahshua Shalom, well, Shania Kabbal La Shala Yachim Now was a Konyim Now Shal Yasha Allah, which I said Shania meaning double, Kabbal is honor. Lash is two. Shalayach Yim Nawa is our apostles. Was is in Zakonium. Nawa is our elders. You can say of great millstone is Shal Godwala Rakub or Godwala Rakub, which Godwala Rakub means great millstone. Shalom, of course, to Elek. Shalom La Bachiarium of the nation of Israel. Shemiah Maf, my name is Amafa from the Great Millstone Play Tables Camp, located here in the city of Philadelphia. Coming again with another wee lesson through the spirit and power of Yah by Shemiah Shai. Which we have it here. It's a big deal. Trump takes a giant leap in the Space Command launch. I must note that this lesson was already done before, but due to Esau and Satan working on the computer, it didn't save any audio. Or none of the audio was actually captured. So I have to redo it. So we're going to redo it in the best of my memory through, of course, the spirit. It reads here, it says that it's one step for man, one giant leap of Trump King. Donald Trump made a short journey on Thursday from Oval Office to the White House Rules Garden and promised to unleash an army of space warriors to infinity and beyond. It is a hot sunshine of the dog days August the US president hosted a ceremony for a creation of a space command within the military or strictly speaking a recreation of a sp space command because this already they already had a space force pretty much it says its previous incarnation was terminated in 2002 so this is just more so a formal introduction of this as it says a part of government restructuring it's a big deal Trump insisted building space as the next war fighting domain as domain goes into territory which there's going to be a Malchama Ba Shemayim in the heavens are in the in heaven which when you go into the book of Revelation the 12th chapter, or yeah, Revelation 12 and 7, it goes in two, which the territory of this war in heaven is written of here in the scriptures. It says here, and there was a war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon, of course, is Esau, and the dragon fought with his angels. You have Esau and the rest of the rest of the heathen nations which have their which you're going to go into a space force 
Let's go into it. Back to the article. Which it reads here. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Excuse me, excuse me. It says a little dream he added. It's about space. Drawn out the soon. Trump has or who's shown little appetite for foreign wars. I must note that foreign means also alien. Okay, which the Esau Edom he deems the chariots of Israel, which are aerial phenomenons in his current terminology. Previously known as unidentified flying objects or UFOs. This is going to be the war, a foreign war. Wars that he's speaking of. If you are in a spiritual knowing or have knowledge to know or of the science, okay, of what which science means knowledge of what he's actually speaking of and what the scriptures are speaking of. It says here are tackling climate change does not seem concerning about the extraterrestrial threats. <laughs> it says Slock, it says the dangers of to our country constantly evolve and so much so much must we he said no those who wish to do harm to the United States to seek to challenge us in the ultimate High ground of space is going to be a whole different ball game. Of course, you're gonna have this war in heaven, which Yahweh Shai is going to come back, and in his second coming, he's going to come with the holy hosts of the angels. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 47 and 3. It reads, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, which is their sins, of the Edomites. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. He's coming back as a angelic power. I must know a powerhouse at that. Unbeatable. Okay, so he's not going to meet thee as a man. Low man, and of course, you know, basically, he came in the flesh. Yahweh Shai came in the flesh, which, um, you read, let's see if that in Colossians or Hebrews, I have to remember, but you know, he came in the flesh, simple as that. But for the sake of time, I'm just gonna speed through this lesson. Go to the precepts and go from there. This is going to be the book of Matthews 24. Or actually, I'm going to bring out Rev. Revelation chapter 1 and I believe it's 7. Revelation 1 and 7, it reads here, Behold, he cometh with clothes, and every eye shall see him. And also them that pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so am I. And cometh with clothes. So this is Yahweh Shai. Okay, he's going to come with clothes, which you get the understanding of that. You, get, you, of course, you go through thy precepts to get the understanding. Which you go to Psalms 104. And verse 3, it says, Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh... The clouds, his chariot. It's a chariot is a a vehicle which you go into Hebrew. You have Rakab or you have here Rakawab, okay, which is a vehicle. See a vehicle as written on. So these are the vessels in which the angels, the Hamalaaka Yum, ride in, which Yahweh Shai will be in a ginormous mountain size chariot which we're going to show you that in the book of Edris which the book of the Apocrypha is deemed not canon by Esau Edom the wicked but we know it of course is divinely inspired it is a part of the scriptures because it links up with the 
scriptures or what many people know, know as the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Those books, which I believe is about, if I'm not mistaken, the Prophica includes about, if I'm not mistaken, 15 books. Starting with, I believe, the book of Edris and going and ending with the book of Maccabees, the second book of Maccabees, that is. They're all canon. They're all part of the scriptures. And who can trust the words of the devil at all? Who's a deceiver? Esau eat him. He wants to leave you, of course, dark in gross darkness and ignorance. When all the scriptures, the prophets have the understanding of what the scriptures actually mean. Mr. Elite know that Yahweh Shah is coming back. Because why would they invent a space force, a space command, a sixth branch of the military, which we're going to go into. It says the space command's operations are expected to include enable sp satellite based navigation and communication for troops in the field. Providing warning of missile launches abroad and defending against or disruption by Chinese and Russian anti-satellite weapons. Trump wearing a navy suit and white tie, red tie-dye Babylonian, that is, did not promise to boldly go, but rather to boldly deter aggression and outpace America's rivals by far. He promised that the Space Force, celebrated by supporters on hats of t-shirts, but Lampooned by critics and comedians will soon follow. Space calm will soon be followed. Very important, but by the established of the United States Space Force as the sixth branch of the United States Armed Forces. Which, when you go into that, that includes, you see, here, the sixth branch will join the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard as a distinct service which will be unlike the rest but obviously it will be a service it will be part of the military it says here that the Space Force will organize, train, equip Space Con's mission their mission is going to be to go against the angels, simple as that that's why they have a 24 hour surveillance in the heavens of any activity. So it says, House of Senate bill defers on some point. Actually, it says, yeah, it says, is yet to win approval by Congress, but the House of Senate bills differ on some point to work to reconcile the two will start after Congress. Returns the summer recess. Overall, Trump had tone of the less Star Trek Captain Jean Puck Pil Picard and the Darth Vader Trump. As the president says, space combo ensure that America's dominance in space will never be questioned and never threatened. Because we know the best way to prevent conflict is to prepare for victory. You know, the way to of course prepare for what the Lord already has put in your mind is to of course declare that you have a space force and also build up your arsenal so that you can of course do this fight which is prophecy to happen prophesied to happen I must say it says Thursday 10 minute ceremony was attended by the vice president Mike Pence the, De the defense secretary Mark Esper and the general J. J. Raymond who will be served as the first commander of the U.S. Space Command. He currently heads the Space Force Command, which currently deals with the lion's share of the military space operation. Raymond presented Trump with a small memento and said to a pause on behalf of Space Warfighter, thank you for your leadership. Trump perhaps feeling closer than he ever before to being emperor of the universe. Replied now, he's saying emperor of the universe. Of course, you go to that word emperor means a commander, okay? 
Emperor going back from the past. Emperor. Okay. Going back to the article. Slack. Wrong article. It says here that. Trump, of course, said, thank you very much. And he stood by Esper, formally signed documents creating the Spacecom as in chief master S sergeant of unfurred the flag of the U.S. Space Command, depicting American Eagle soaring above the Earth. And of course, that's um, Book of Obadiah. And that sign of the eagle is a sign of Edomites, Esau Edom, a sign of the Romans, which these Edomites were Romans. Okay, or took over the nationality of the original Romans, which are Japhetic. So-called Polynesians, so-called Pacific Islanders, so-called Triscans. Obadiah 1 and 3 it says, The pride of thine heart has deceived thee, thou that dwells in the clefts of rock. Whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who will bring me down to the ground. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence I will bring thee down, saith the Lord. They went, of course, uh, with their different Apollo missions back in the. What's that? Apollo missions back in the. Maybe the 1970s. That, of course, marked the end of this rulership, okay? <laughs> Meaning that they're going to go down, really. That's what basically is. It marked the the, the coming down of Esau Edom. Because he went up, of course, there into outer space. He didn't go to the moon, but he went, of course, in the Shemayim. And set up Ness, which when you go into the word Ness, go back to Quan, which is a dwelling. These space stations and such. But she wants to, of course, escape the nuclear destruction. That's what Esau Edom wants to do. But he doesn't know that, or he does know that he's just going to be rounded up first for fuss for slavery. And then, as we're going to hunt them down from all of the, um, the clefts of the rocks. Let me see if I can find a precept. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16 and 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, said your Lord Yahweh, and they shall fish them. And after, I will send many hunters. I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. And we're currently fishers of men, but the word we fish to for the elect, give them the bait, which is the word they hear. It. The sheep hear his voice of the Lord, and of course, they get sealed. Have that the wa, which they were predestined anyway, and will come into truth, believe, and be delivered. It's going to be a time when they, of course, the elect prophets are going to get spiritual power. We're going to be changed at the moment it took an eye the last Trump. We're going to be made hunters. We're going to, of course, fish out these Edomites. You know, they're going to be in their little space retreats, their doomsday bunkers and such too. Okay, as you see, Esau has weaponized space. So... Going back to the We article. Which, it, that's basically the end of it. I'm just going to go to reading this revelation.
Revelation chapter 12, 7 again. And then we'll go back to the prophet or go to the prophet. Revelation 12 and 7. And there was a war in heaven. Okay, which you go into the Hebrew, it speaks of. Which I brought it in a class lesson. Um, Malchama, which has a war of battle in Hebrew. Bashamayim. Which I'm going to see if I can just quickly retrieve. Give me a wee moment. Isn't that going to be on the screen? It will be just verbalized. So... It reads, it says, Wa the Haya Ma La Bar Malchama, which Malchama is a, a battle, alright, or war, Ba Shemayim, which I mean in Ba and Shemayim is pertaining to the waters, which is heaven, right? It says, Maya Ka Allah Wa. Malaaka Yahweh, which that is Michael, which is Ma Ya Ka'ala, which I believe that means like the power or like or as the power or of the power. I believe when you go into that breakdown, Slocky, if I'm not 100%. But it says, Wa Malaaka Ya Wa, which that means in Malaaka is angel, Ya and Wa has basically goes down to in his angels, okay? And it says, um, they just continue on in the Hebrew, which I'm just gonna leave that. that it goes on, it says, and his angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels. And you have Esau and dragon, the rest of these other heathen nations which are going to be teamed up are going to fight the angels in the heavens, okay? Simple as that, Yahweh Shai will be amongst them. Which, we go into the account in the Apocrypha. Second Edges chapter 13 and 3 it says, And I behold, and, hold, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned, and his, he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. And whoso, when, uh, whensoever the voice went out of his voice, all they burned that he heard his voice. Like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. It's going to go into this basically, I believe it's going into yeah, concentrate fire that a chariot shoot out of it. What you read in Habakkuk, it says, And at, after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heavens. To subdue the man that came out of the sea, which that's going to be, you have Esau and the rest of it, with his space force, space calm, and the rest of his, it'd be as it's described as angels and such, which that'd be these different heathen nations with their different air force and air ability commands and such. Okay. It says, but I beheld, and lo, and he graved himself a great mountain, which is going to be described as a huge chariot, so-called aerial phenomena, so-called UFO, and flew up upon it. And it says, Slaki, verse 7, but I would have seen the region or place where the hill was graven, 
and I could not. He's just basically describing that it was so huge that you couldn't see the end of it. It was that big. It says, and after this, I beheld and lo, all they that were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and thus fight. So they're going to have spirits to fight. Of course, the, the angels, Yahweh Shai. Micah Allah and such. Micah Allah. Rest the angels. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude came, and neither lifted up his hand nor held sword, nor any instrument of, of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it has been a blast of ash or fire. And out of his lips a flaming breath. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. Which, you know. We go to the book of Habakkuk. And it explains this. Um, let me see if this is a precept. Uh, no. So this is Habakkuk three and four. It says, "And his brightness was the as the light, and had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power." Now, if you go into this, Yad, let me see, he had horns, let me see, this doesn't, uh, I know it goes into it. Alright, so we got a ray of light. Okay. I usually go and get it in the I am the my sword. That goes in, but this goes into it. Basically the concentrated fire. Alright, simply that shoots from the the chariots. Okay. Before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. Okay, that's basically it what I'm bringing out in there so go back to Revelation 12 and also going back to that second edges and the reason it says here Verse 11, and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude, which were prepared to fight, which they are preparing to fight, as you can see, as you have it, it was written in an article, and against um, whom, anybody who, of course, are threatening them, and burned them up, every one, so that Upon the sudden of the new multitude, nothing was perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. So they're going to be destroyed. Simple as that. By Yahweh Shai, his chariots. Simple as that. Concentrated, burned them to powder. Afterward, I saw a man. Or I saw the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him another of a peaceful multitude. That goes into something else. Now going going back to Revelation, the twelfth chapter, and it says here in verse eight, and prevailed not. So you said you had that 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 war in heaven, which would be Esau, and the rest of the nations fighting against, uh, of course, Yahweh Shai, my I, Micah, Allah, and the rest of the hosts of the angels. Okay. 
it says and prevailed not neither was their face found more in, anymore in heaven they're going to be destroyed as it explained in the second Edgers 13 chapter and a great d dragon was cast out that old serpent curled the devils and Satan which deceived the whole world so you that goes to show you Esau is the devil he's Satan he's that man he's wicked all right he is the physical counterpart for the spiritual demon Satan he was cast out into the earth he was destroyed and his angels were cast out with them they were destroyed okay simple as that that's the understanding on that scripture about the war in heaven because there's a false interpretation given by these pseudo churches out there which spit out nothing but wise fables cunning fables and such which they don't have the oil they don't have the understanding of the scriptures so with that I'm gonna say Shalom as you can see there's a space force been created already been created just being formally introduced to you a space command launch Shalom to the elect what double honor to the elves and apostles that great millstone Shalom